Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin and today I'm going to be doing my summer wrap up for you guys. I started off the summer not really reading a whole lot of anything and I was really surprised by how much I read. Um, considering that I was out here living life and just trying to enjoy myself. Although I will say by the time like August rolled around, I was ready to sit my ass in the house. June came and I didn't really do a whole lot. I hung out with Blair um, and by hung out, I mean like he mostly slept and then I just watched him like a creep. Um, and then it was time for my birthday and I had a literal full week of celebrations every day. I had went mini golfing and then I had a brunch thing. Um, then me and my friends went to the pool that day and then the next day, oh, the next day I was at <laughs> the Bridgerton Experience and then happy hours, hangouts with friends. Um, my mom took me to see Six and um, we went to a vineyard and that was nearby and just a whole lot of stuff. I was a thought on a yacht for the summer, not for my birthday, but it did come like near to my birthday. So yeah, thought on a yacht, um, more vineyards, more, more wine, like just out here living life. But I somehow managed to read a ton of shit. And I'm very, very proud of myself for doing so, especially considering that in June, I was still slumping majorly hard. I just did not feel like reading anything. I was, had, would rather have been watching TV, which I did a lot of, um, instead of reading stuff. Now, I'm not going to say any book's names, House of Birth and Blood, but Maybe there was something that was going on that put me into a slump that made me not want to read. But that's that's not what we're here to talk about, right? We're here to talk about what I did read and how my summer went. And so let's just get into it. So June, like I said, it started off really slow. I was still in a slump and I didn't want to do a whole lot of anything. But you know what? I read three things and it actually happened closer to the end of the month than like throughout the month. One of the things I had picked this up actually starting in May and I didn't really finish it until June, but that was The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I had only read certain dark things by her and I really, really enjoyed it. And so I was very curious about like her other writings. Um, I have like two or three other books from her and I was just like, you know what? I can't I need to read her stuff. I, I'm going to keep buying her books and like not reading them. That doesn't make sense. So I decided to pick this up and was it very different from certain dark things, but still loved it so freaking much. This is about Nina, who's trying to come out into, into society and during the grand season and like all the other guys her age that she would be married off to kind of think like she's strange. She has this slight, um, magical ability. I forget what it was. I've read this so long ago, but she has a slight magical ability and like it's not really proper for her to show it off um, amongst people in her society. It's kind of like a parlor trick and it's like, mm, no, not this isn't for you, girl. And so she is taken under the wing of her cousin's wife, who for some reason just finds her annoying from the beginning. Her name is Valerie and Valerie from the very beginning is not here for Nina's shenanigans and shit. So she's trying to find her a match that she thinks will be suitable. And really Valerie doesn't really care because she is just so, um, she married into the family by the way. And Valerie is just really concerned with making sure that her family is solidified and taken care of her taken care of because her husband is well off and, you know, can take care of her family. And so she thinks that trying to find Nina a match is just like a waste of time. But what happens is Nina runs into this guy, Hector, who also has the same type of magical abilities as her. Also, the magic in this does not play a huge part. It's just something that happens to be there. So don't think like this is some big magical, fantastical world. It is not. And kind of glad it wasn't. Nina starts talking to Hector. And now this is where things get complicated because Hector and Valerie have a past. Nina knows nothing about this past. 
but she will soon find out because things get just so crazy. There's betrayal and backstabbing and like first love stuff happening. And you know how like heightened emotions are with first loves. Like for some reason, it is the end of the world when things happen with first loves. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So many heightened emotions. It's just a beautifully written story all the way around. You get this beautiful love story between Nina and Hector, even though there's ups and downs in it. You get just like the atmosphere of being in Lazai. I think that's the name of the the country or town that they're in. And like all of the gowns and the balls that they're attending. And like, it's just, it's a delicious story. I. I thoroughly enjoyed this and I am excited because I understand that Sylvie Morena Garcia writes different genres like with every book that she writes and I'm excited to see how she writes in other books. Um, so far between the two that I've read this would be my favorite and then certain dark things I think I ended up giving this like 4.25 stars. I just had such an amazing time it was so good loved it. As I was finishing up that one, I decided maybe my reading slump is because I am reading fiction. So I picked up a nonfiction, which is also a book that was on my books that I need to finish before the end of this year. This is The Road to Jonestown by Jeff Gwen. So this is about Jim Jones, who is the leader of the People's Temple Church, which is actually a cult. And um, it starts from, it actually starts from his parents. Then you get a little bit of history about who his parents were. And then you go from Jim Jones's birth until his uh, death in Guyana and it is an amazing ride. Also while I was reading this I was very into watching cult documentaries so you know Scientology I watched one about people's uh, temple and then um, the FL FLDS church what was that stay sweet or something stay sweet and pray or something like that very good documentary. But um, I was reading this and it's so interesting because you could see how people were drawn to him and to his church. He's very charismatic character and he was actually doing a lot of good in the community. Um, he was speaking out against racism at the time and the problems between social classes in the U.S. And so people were flocking to his church because they thought like yeah, clearly he's doing good for people. And I guess in a way he was. While on the flip side, he was completely manipulating all of his followers. Um, there was sexual abuse happening in the church by him and other leaders. And like, there was also, it was like weird racism happening within the church or like segregation. It was just so weird. Like there was this one part where he would start sleeping with like members of his church but they were all white. And then like the black members were like, how come you don't ever choose to sleep with black women? And it was just like, I, guys, this is not the fight you wanna have, okay? And then like he creates like this whole reason why they need to leave the area that they're in because people are after them. They're, but like these things are made up and he's just creating this atmosphere of fear so that people will continue to look at him and like the way that he sets up these miracles that happen. It's fascinating. Fascinating. I was just like, man, I could see how people would follow him. Not me. Not today. After he said some crazy shit, I would be like, uh, bro, like this, this ain't it. But you know, when you feel like you want to be a part of a community and then you find people that are like-minded and seem to care about you, I could see how you could get sucked in. And then you get to see the end of how things turned out in Guyana and it just, wow. I didn't know everything that like went into it, how it, how it ended, but very good read. I had a fun time with this. Fun, I don't know if fun is the word. It was interesting. And then in June, I read, um, by this point, I felt like I was 
I was in the mood for reading. And so I picked a uh, volume five of Saga and by Brian K. Vaughn. This is a space opera about Alana and Marco and they are two people from Warring Planets. And I think they're actually, so they're both soldiers from those Warring Planets and they fall in love and then they have this baby who is being hunted along with Alana and Marco. And I can't really remember what happened in volume five. A lot. People start coming together in an alliance so that they can get a means to an end. And, um, oh, you know what I do remember? Brian K. Vaughn has no problem killing people off. You think they're going to be here for a long time? And then they're not. Then they're not. Don't get attached. That's all I'm going to say. And that was my June. And then we're just going to roll right along into July when I started If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This was also a book that I had to read before the end of the year. I read it, wish I hadn't. I probably should have DNF'd this well into the middle, but I wanted to know how it was going to end because I was so annoyed by the main character that I was just like, surely this can't end how I think it's gonna end. And you know what, it did. And I was annoyed by it. And um, also solidified the fact that I, in fact, do not like Shakespeare. I don't like Shakespeare. I don't care about it. But if you are a huge Shakespeare fanatic, fan, then, you know, this is right up your alley. This is for you. It's not for me. You're following a group of theater students at this, like, pretentious Shakespeare acting school thing or whatever. So like there's a certain group, but like everyone for the most part likes each other. And you know, they're all very eccentric um, personalities. And then there's one person who just has like this very aggressive personality and who were just like, bro chill, like you're doing a lot. And he was doing a lot. And then he comes up dead. Yes, he dies. And um, this part, the main character in the very beginning, he is getting out of prison for killing the, the dude that everyone thought was a D-bag, who honestly, I feel like deserved to die. So like really possibly doing us all a favor. But anyway, he's just coming out of jail and then he's telling the detective who followed the case, because the detective was like, I actually don't believe you. And so the main character is telling the story of what happened from the very beginning when they were all friends to how they got to where he was in jail. There were like these big monologues, like, of sh like just chunks of Shakespeare monologues. And I guess like fun, was that fun for me? But again, if you are a fan of Shakespeare, would be fun for you. I ended up giving this 2.25 stars. Wish I had not read it. Or I wish I had DNF'd. And then I read the Jasmine Throne, the first in the Burning Throne, Burning Kingdoms series um, by Tasha Suri. Okay, so I kind of don't fully remember what it's about. I mean, I do, but I don't. And so I'm going to try to tell you as best as I can because really about these two women. One is the sister of like the king or something who is ruling this place um, and he's kind of ruling it into the ground, but he wants his sister to burn on a pyre for like religious reasons because I guess he thinks like if his sister does it, then um, I actually don't know why he wants his sister to do it, Beyond, like I get it for religious reasons, but I don't really remember like what the reasoning was. Like women are supposed to be like this holy thing, but they need to sacrifice themselves. Again, I read this a little while ago and didn't quite stick with me. Yeah, you have him and then the sister's like, you know what, I'm not doing that shit, so fuck off. And so the brother's like, all right, well, cool, I'm going to imprison you. And so he does. And so while she's in prison, she gets a maid and that maid, I don't remember her name, but is she maid or is she part of the resistance against the king guy? So these two women come together and they really just kind of help each other out because one is trying to break out of the, the, the sister's clearly trying to break out of her prison. And the the maid woman is um, clearly a part of the resistance. And so they figure if they can help each other, then they can get rid of this dude. Now, there are a bunch of side characters 
that I really did not appreciate because I felt like they, especially in the beginning, when you're not really sure what's going on, you just have these side characters and you're just like, what's the point of you being here? And even towards the end, I was still like, what is the point of you being here? I, you could have been maybe a chapter of something. But most of these people were a part of the resistance or they were like on the king's side. I thought it was good. I ended up giving this a 3.5. Like I really enjoyed it while I was reading it. But one, it, this didn't stick with me. So, and I knew that as soon as I was done reading it that I probably would not continue. I mean, I enjoyed the budding relationship between the maid and the princess lady. It wasn't compelling enough for me to want to continue the series. Maybe I say that and then I'll get like FOMO and want to read it because the next book is out and people are reading it and I'll be like, I want to read it too. But maybe not. I think it was a good story for what it was while I was reading it. It's a very slow read until like maybe the last 30% of the book where like the action really ramps up. So like if you're looking for something where there's action all throughout, this isn't for you. But if you don't mind a slower paced book in the beginning where you're kind of learning about the characters and the backstory and the history of the country and stuff, this is for you. Then after that, I picked up With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I can't remember if this is one of the books on my must read by the end of the year, but I read it. And I had such a great time with this. I love Elizabeth Acevedo. Like, who doesn't? And if you do, don't, just don't tell me. This is about Imani. She has a toddler and she's also in high school. And while she's in high school, she is kind of just like, I'm gonna take my regular classes, keep my head down, get out of here so that I can go on to get a career after this. Um, I don't even think she was really thinking about college after high school she was just gonna get a job and work so she could provide for her and her family um her mother has passed away her father isn't really in the picture and obviously she's like i'm not even really thinking about boys at this point because i ain't got time i have a baby and school and work and um but while she's at high school there's this elective that opens up and it's in the culinary arts and imani is very great at cooking and she takes this class and it opens up to other experiences and things that she like wouldn't have thought of normally it, it's still some type of not responsibility because she's already responsible but um it just instills like this whole new like way of thinking for her and she's like you know what I think I want to be a chef I want to go to culinary school and while she's in this class she meets a boy but she's not here for it because she's like I don't have time for boys and like honestly girl good for you but budding romance happens it's very cute I really loved it it was a very short story I gave this three 0.75 stars then moving on to A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens I ended up DNFing this like 30% in. And when I say 30% in, I mean like a hundred and something pages in because there's so many fucking pages in this book. Nothing happened. I really could not care about this. This was a book that I needed to read by the end of the year. I read some of it. And so you're following this guy who leaves the castle. I actually don't know because in the very, in the part that I did read, you are just, you're learning a lot about this woman. I think this woman is important. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. There's this woman and she's important. And um, there's two people, they look very similar, but one is a prince and the other is like uh, not. And so they've got to get, I think the prince ends up leaving the castle and getting arrested or something. Girl, listen, I don't know. This was not for me. I got very annoyed and um, I didn't care. I was really on a roll in July. I don't know what was going on with me, but whatever. So then I picked up Vengeful, Vengeful. I picked up Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This is the sequel to um, Vicious. And I. this is in the villain series. If you ask me, this is a duology. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. Third book, haven't heard of her. So this, you're still following um, Eli and what was his other name? Victor. 
Eli and Victor. You're still following Eli and Victor, who still hate each other, who are still trying to rid the world of each other. But this one, we introduce some other characters. Let me rewind. Vicious is about extraordinaries, people who have um, these superhuman abilities and some people use them for good some people don't but Eli and Vicious it's like you know what I'm gonna rid the world of of extraordinaries even though he himself is an extraordinary and then Victor is like bro uh chill and vows to stop Eli and so you get in the first book you get to see them both try to like destroy each other and so in the second book you're still trying to see them destroy each other but with, you know, extra characters. I don't know that this needed to be made. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Was it necessary for the series? No. But I still had a good fucking time, so. Um, Cause I, I feel like Vicious could have been a standalone and like the way it ended was just, it was fine. This didn't, add or take away from from it. I ended up giving this also 3.75 stars. This was not like a great, like I read some really good things, right? But like, did I read like amazing things? Like that just totally blew my mind? No, but I had fun with it. I'm glad I read it. It was, this was also very fast paced. Like you just got right through it. You just really sped right through it and it was just a good time. It was a good read. I mean, I obviously can't tell you all that happens in here because one, it's a sequel and two, like, it's a sequel. And then the last book I read in July was The Blood of Emmett Till by Bryson C. Tiller <laughs> by Timothy B. Tyson. Whoa. What's happening to my brain? Um, so obviously this is a nonfiction about Emmett Till, the circumstances surrounding his death, the um, environment in which it was possible for such a thing to take place. I think this is the only book where the woman Caroline Bryant like spoke with the actual person. I think this is like the only interview she really gave was for this book. Um, Fuck that hoe. Also, in my mind, she was already dead. And she's not. And um, her day is coming anytime. Yeah, so you find out like what the climate was in the United States. All of these circumstances, like things that happened to other people allowed the setup of this to happen in Mississippi. Emmett was a little kid. He wasn't a grown man. He wasn't he was a little kid who was visiting cousins in the South in Mississippi. He was from Chicago. He went down to Mississippi. And what happened was he whistled at a white woman, Caroline Bryant. And this led to her husband and his brother going to like drag him in the middle of the night and they kill him quite brutally. And during this whole thing, I was just annoyed at um, Carolyn because the whole time she was just like, I had no idea they were gonna do all of that. Like, girl, what did you think was gonna happen when you claim that a, a black boy, um, I don't even know if she like said that he whistled at her. I think she like said more happened, but like the exchange was so fast that nothing happened. I think she said like he tried to assault her and girl, this just made me angry for the systems that were and still are in place that allow things like this to happen to little black boys and girls um, when they are villainized for just living. Uh, meanwhile, there are like white kids who are shooting up things and we're just like, he's just a kid. Like, my spirit was just angry after reading it, but I was glad that I read it. This was also a book that I needed to read off of that list for the end of the year. I was really trying to get through some of those books because the end of the year is coming and I was not doing well with that list. This was an excellent read. 3.75 stars. Still a good read. I would recommend it. So August was fun for me because I knew I wanted to read. I had 
my reading had clearly ramped up from three books to like six in July. And here's the thing. I love to have a TBR. It just sets my mind at ease to know what I'm going to be reading, right? But I did not want to make decisions. Now, for July, I was asked by Steph at Stephanie Bookish for her to choose her TBR for her read it down series. And so I did. And I was like, it was great. Um, if you have not watched it, you should go watch it. If you're not subscribed to her, you should subscribe to her. But it got me thinking like, I could have people just choose my TBR. So I tested this out with Ray. I gave her a couple of prompts because unlike Stephanie who just let her friends just have free reign over whatever she was gonna read, I was just like, I need to have some semblance of control over people controlling my life. I gave Ray four prompts and she came through. The first prompt that I gave Ray, who you should also go subscribe to if you're not and watch her videos because they're funny. I love her drunk book reviews. She gives very, very funny ones. Um, her opinions are opiniony but always good and always great for a discussion and she's just a wonderful human being so I don't know why you are still here watching this video when you could be watching Ray's videos or Steph's videos and like yeah go or stay and finish like hearing me talk about these books because you could also do that and then go watch them the first prompt that I gave Ray was to pick a book that she really wants me to read. She chose Arsenic and Adobo. I am not uh, a cozy mystery person. I don't really read mysteries and thrillers like that. Like I enjoy them when I do read them, but I, I actually never pick them up. And so Ray actually got this for me for my birthday. So I read it. Now, considering that this was my very first cozy mystery, I had a great time with it. I gave this three and a half stars. It was fun. We're following Leela and she moves back to town to like this small town where her family owns this restaurant and her ex-boyfriend is eating at this restaurant one day. He is a total D-bag and he's also like the town's food critic and apparently is very critical of every restaurant, which makes me think mm, maybe it's not the restaurant. It's you. Like if do you hate every restaurant? Like, come on, make it make sense. While he's eating at the at Leela's family's restaurant, he dies. And you know, I'm gonna be honest, throughout the whole book, I did not feel bad for him dying. I was just like, all right, another one bites the dust. But you're following Leela and her friend as they're trying to figure out how this happened because she knows that she didn't murder him and nobody, none of her family in the restaurant murdered him. So how did he die? Because it, now it is a blight on their restaurant. People don't want to eat there, clearly because somebody died there. And a whole mystery just unfurls. Like this whole underground criminal activity, just insane. I had a fantastic time. The aunties in this were so funny. I will say that Lilo was kind of annoying at times because there would just be like obvious things happening. And she'd be like, hmm, I wonder if this has anything to do with what we're, we're trying to investigate. Yeah, girl, it does. It's been brought up three times. Like, I don't, I don't know why you need somebody to come connect the dots for you. Like, do you need me to come? I can come connect the dots. We can color it in together. That kind of got a little bit annoying. And then there was like a little bit of miscommunication between her and her best friend where like Lila was like, oh, well, one day we're going to leave. And her best friend was like, no, we're not. We're staying here. And they like, couldn't get it together and I just want to be like why don't you guys just talk about it instead of being passive aggressive and be like we're fine clearly you're not clearly you're mad at each other or one of you is mad at the other and like y'all just need to talk through we could just use our words but other than that I had a fantastic time I'm definitely going to pick up the next one because I'm just enjoyed the characters I enjoyed Leela I enjoyed the story overall especially for my first cozy mystery had a fun time then I asked her to pick a book that she thinks that I would love and she chose Iron Widow by Jiren Zhao. I had a really good time. I gave this 3.75 stars. Now is it my favorite book of all time? No. And I'm going to say that this has been hyped with like the love triangle thruple thing happening and I feel like it was a little oversold because like that's 
Like it's a, an element of the book, but it's not a huge thing in it. And maybe it'll be a bigger thing in the second book. I don't know. You're following Zetian and so there are, there's a war happening, right? And the way that they fight these wars are there's a pilot and a concubine pilot and they power up these chrysalises and they go out and they fight the enemy. Now the um, pilots are usually, they're not usually, the pilots are men and the concubine pilots are women. And the um, pilots are just, you know, out here fighting and killing the bad guys. And really what the women are here for are for the men to use their energy to suck up their energy so that the pilots will survive in these battles with the enemies. And Zetian's sister was a concubine pilot and she dies at the hands of one of the pilots and she's furious, she's upset, she just thinks like this unjust because women are just bred to be these concubine pilots. There's no glory. Like people are like, oh, it's a glory thing because you know, like you're doing a huge thing for the war. And it's like, nah. And so she enrolls to be a concubine pilot. And her sole mission is to kill the guy that killed her sister. And um, she succeeds in that mission. But while she succeeds in that mission, she finds that she's way more powerful than like most concubine pilot women are, right? And so she gets elevated to work with a very powerful pilot. And she's just like, you know what? I'm gonna take down the whole system. Fuck everybody. And you know what I really loved about her the most was that she was ready to die. She just, she gave no fucks. And that was the best part about it because every time someone threatened her with like, I'm gonna kill your family or I'm gonna kill you, she was like, do it, try me. She didn't care about her family either, nor should she have because they weren't shit. Over time, she develops a mutual respect for the pilot that she's with and the boy that she and she liked back home enters into the story to kind of help her hide what she's doing because he knows her plan. And he's like, I got to help her because she's going to get herself killed, which I mean... <laughs> She was with the shits anyway. A relationship develops amongst all three of them. I had a good time with this. The writing was very simplistic. I'm not going to lie. It just, there were times. It was simplistic and also complicated because I cannot tell you about chrysalises. I just felt like that was overly complicated. But overall, the story was easy to read. Will I continue on with this? Potentially. I enjoyed reading it while I read it. But as I, the further I get from it, it's not like something I'm just like, oh my God, I'm dying to get back to this. I need to get back to it. I need to find out what happens. So I don't know. I'll probably continue on, but like it wouldn't be in a rush type of thing. Then I asked Ray to pick a book that she had not read, but that she was interested in. Now, I did not know where, obviously I didn't know what she would choose for any of these things, but I was not expecting her to choose this one, which was... Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I read this brief killing of seven, the brief history of seven killings by Marlon James, like a couple of years ago. Really, really liked it, right? It was it a weird story. Yes. But nothing prepared me for this. This is literary epic fantasy. We're following this guy Tracker who can, if you give him a whiff of something, he can find anybody. Normally what he's smelling are things like, um, underarms, crotches, very, very bodily things. You know what I mean? And um, he's being interrogated and they want to know what happened with the story. So you kind of go back to go forward. But while you're going back and then forward, you still go back because he tells stories in the middle of the story that sometimes have nothing to do with this at all. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not explaining this well. And that's for good reason, because boy, was this a mind fuck. Just all over the 
fucking place. You have this um, shapeshifter, Leopard, who is friends with Tracker, and they start off because they are saving a group of children who are different um, from being killed by the townspeople because the townspeople want to kill them because they are different. Now, throughout this story, I feel like it it's insinuated that Tracker and um, Leopard have a relationship, but I don't really know that they do, besides, you know, being friends and all. Man, I really wish I could describe this book to you, but I cannot, because it's so fucking weird. And so basically, the story is Tracker is trying to find this boy who is actually the rightful prince who should be sitting on the throne, but his mother and the child, well, they didn't know the child existed, but his mother was exiled so that her brother could be the king, but like, he's not supposed to be the king. This child is supposed to be the king. And so yeah, you're following Tracker, trying to find this boy, but while he's trying to find the boy, lots of other shit happens in between. Betrayals, murderings, rapes, all kinds of things. There are a lot of trigger warnings. This is arguably one of the most violent books I've read in a long time. And listen, I love a little murder, okay? In the words of Ray, I love a little stabby stabby, you know? But this was crazy violent. Like there's child murder, suicide, rape of men and women. Um, there's talk about slavery and like terrible punishment for slavery. Also women are usually relegated to either being witches or bitches. Neither of them are good. It's not a fantastic time to be a woman in this book. And the second book is actually this whole thing all over again, told from a different perspective. I am both interested and not interested because this was a mind fuck and I don't know if I wanna go through this again. It was a ride, it, it was a ride. I would suggest if you're going to read this, um, if you plan on using listening to the audiobook, don't, don't start there. Start by reading it with your eyes so that you can get a sense of like what's happening. And then you can kind of go and use the audiobook. I started reading this a couple of years ago and I started with the audiobook, super confused. But once I um, read it with my eyes, I could start reading it. Like I did a hybrid read of this um, and reading it first instead of listening to it first really helped. The last book that I asked Ray to pick for me was a book, any book. And it was either on my TBR or not on my TBR, but thankfully she chose a book that was on my TBR. And that was The Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rashawn. You're following, following Samaya and she has this crazy interaction with uh, this man that she thought she was dating. Turns out he's also dating two other women. They have like this big viral moment in a restaurant and the three women become friends. And so they vow that they're gonna work on themselves and not like work on trying to find a man. Haha, -ha, surprise, because the next day at work, Samaya goes to work and she runs into this new hire at her tech company who's super handsome, Daniel. His name was Daniel. Um, she meets Daniel and they start this uh, friend, flirty friendship relationship. And she's just like, no, I'm supposed to be focused on me and getting my life together and pursuing my dreams and stuff. And um, Daniel is also there for other reasons. And he's not supposed to be getting uh, entangled. And they do. And it is fun watching them try not to be together, but still want to be together. I enjoyed their like flirty banter with each other. And then like, just try not to like each other, but they were, they were all like cute and stuff. And I loved it. I even enjoyed the end when he was like, you know what, I want to explain some things. And I appreciated that. I appreciate that. Cause it's so rare that people are like, we have a problem. Let's talk about it. Let me explain something to you. And so often it's like, he hates me and then they run away and it's like well girl if he had stuck around for about five minutes more maybe he would have told you what was up that's neither here nor there we're not talking about things that i hate in books but anyway this was so fun i enjoyed this so much i cannot wait to get to the other two books in this series that follow the other two friends that samaya makes in this taylor in london i think that they're also going to be fantastic to read from so those were raised picks for me and she did a fantastic job and she chose books that were all from my 
physical TBR, which meant that I read more books to get rid of for my uh, bookend series. Am I gonna make it to 90 by the end of the year? No. I picked up Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the last book in the Mistborn Era 1 trilogy. And let me tell you, this is one of the best endings to a series I have ever read. Well of Ascension, which was the second book, I it was good. It was good. But it was just it was just kind of okay. Like it didn't compel me in the way that the first book did. But man, did this bring it all back home. I had such a good time. I was weeping at the end of this. About two characters I didn't particularly even care about. In fact, I was crying a lot about a lot of things. Basically, in the very first book, which was um, Final Empire, Vin and Kelsier and their ragtag group of friends. They all band together to bring down the Lord Ruler who has this grip on the land and it's not doing great things for people. There are mist wraiths that are killing people in the night. They're killing like the slave people and really the elite are the only ones thriving in this society. So Vin, Kelsier, their friends, they're all trying to bring them down. Vin befriends Eland, who is part of the elite. And so we are coming to the culmination of what those events led up to and how the end of this situation turns out. Is the Lord Ruler still here at this point? Who's ruling things? Who's in charge? Are the slaves in any better situation than they were in the beginning? what's going on with the elite class. So many things are answered. And like, oh, the way that everything wraps up, I will say in the first 25, 30% of this, I was not caring about what was going on. There were like minor characters in previous books, but I was just like, wow, you're, you're really got a role here. I don't know when that happened, but I mean, good for you, I guess. But I really did not care about them. But then towards the end of the book, I was like, this is what they got you doing? Good for you. Good for you. All these tabbies in here, all these moments where I was just like oh, gasping and just so excited about what was going on. And then towards the end, it was just heartbreak hotel just so many tears they were like happy tears and sad tears all mixed together I was highly emotional so fucking good so good and shout out to Dasha from Mythic Pages for telling me that I was going to love this because she was right I loved this so much thank you Dash appreciate you and then speaking of Dasha the last book that I wrapped up in August for the summer was a book that me and Dasha started a long time ago. I was young then, full of hope, full of dreams. We started House of Earth and Blood, the first book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. Dasha and I buddy read this and when we first started, we had a drinking game going. So glad that we stopped it because we would, one of us was bound to end up with like liver failure by the end of it because so many things were happening in this. This 800 pages of a lot. Did it need to be 800 pages? Absolutely not. There's no fucking way it needed to be 800 pages. I would give it a smooth five. It could have stopped at five. Like there was 300 pages of this that we just did not need. Most of those pages were in the beginning when we were trying to lay a foundation for relationships between people, which could have been hap which could have happened in a more condensed fashion. Let me tell you what this is about as best as I can. So we are following um, Bryce. She's half fae, half human. She kind of detests her fae side because her dad is a dick. He is a uh, king of the fae's. 
do not ask me about the political government of this place because it just it seems like there's a lot of leaders for this one little city and it's just like y'all this is a lot this is probably why y'all have all these problems there's too many people too many hands in the pot you know what I mean but um her best friend gets murdered and they are she's distraught about it clearly because wouldn't you be upset if your best friend was murdered a couple of years later she has to figure out who or what actually murdered her best friend who was like the almost leader of the pack of wolves um I would just also like to say that somebody I don't remember who called this Zootopia and I can't unsee it now nothing but just animal people all up it through this Zootopia um but yeah she needs to figure out who or what killed her best friend because she the government thinks that this thing is on the loose again and killing people and so that's what she does but she can't just go traipsing through um Crescent City alone no she has to have an angel be her protector and this is like I don't remember what they call him what is his name? Hunt. He is an assassin angel. So he's like the badass of the badass angels. And in the beginning, they are not friends. Hunt thinks that she's just a party girl. And Bryce thinks that Hunt is a douchebag, which... And over the course of them having to work together to figure out this mystery, they do develop a type of friendship. Very soon after that, a relationship of sorts. Maybe not a relationship. They definitely develop a friendship with strong sexual tension. But man, this was a long, long book about Bryce wearing tight clothes and Hunt noticing that she was wearing tight clothes. And we didn't really like delve into the mystery part or trying to like figure out the mystery until like well into this well into it. I think Sarah J Mass wanted us to know that Hunt and Bryce really hate each other for like 700 pages first. I don't think I enjoyed this. I did not hate it. I did not hate it. I definitely did not like it enough to want to read the second book, especially because um, I've heard some not great things about uh, the second book. If you want to hear a hilarious rant, I will link one by Jashana down below. It is hilarious. I've already watched because I knew there was no way I was going to read that book. Go watch it. Spoilers in there, but you know, if that doesn't bother you, go watch it. Um, Zootopia was cool. I think I ended up giving this like 2.5275 stars because again I did not hate it but it was so long so draining. I think that this honestly this put me into a slump in the beginning because it just was so slow moving. It was not great. The politics of the world was confusing. Even like looking I don't even look y'all I don't even look at maps like when I get a book, I will look at the map for the first time, right? Like map in the beginning. Um, and then I'll never refer to the map again because that's just who I am. But no, here I was looking at this fucking map. Like, what does this mean? What's the point of this? It was not helpful. Nothing in this book was fucking helpful. And that's my summer. So that is everything that I read in June, July, August, the summer. I had a really, really great reading season. I enjoyed most of what I read, like no five stars, um, barely any four stars, but enjoyable reading nonetheless. I got some books that I really needed to read, read, and I read some books that I honestly would not have chosen had they not been chosen for me, and I appreciate that. And so with that, that's all I have for you guys today. Have you read any of these books? Do you agree or disagree with what I've said? Let me know down in the comments. Give me suggestions of things you think I might like based on what I did like or based on what I didn't like. And I will see you in the next one. Until next time. Bye.